have Sebastian Thrun, CEO of electric plane maker Kitty Hawk, and co-founder of the online education venture Audacity. Please welcome Mr. Thrun, who will tell us whether intelligence, artificial intelligence, is friend or foe. All right. Good seeing you. Yesterday I talked about electric flight to, to save daily from traffic jams. Today about AI. Let me take a poll up first. Who thinks would be a friend? Raise your hand. Okay, about a third. Who thinks is a foe? A few courageous people. Now, those of you who said foe, by the end of a talk, I want you to brainwash your brain and go to friend. Because almost everything you heard about AI is wrong. So let me explain to you what it is, artificial intelligence. Computers are dumb. Computers follow steps that we give them. Because we have to write these steps in excruciating detail, called computer software, we pay software engineers a lot of money. The most amazing thing has just happened. Computers can now teach themselves. So instead of programming computers using excruciating rules, we can now give computers examples and they can form their own rules. That is a colossal difference. You don't teach your children a rule for every contingency in the first 18 years and hope that the rule set is complete. Your children and yourself have formed your own rules and you learn from data. So the core of what's happening in AI today is that computers can learn and form their own rules. Now there's many, many implications. I want to focus on just one, on us, the people, okay? For the last 315,000 years, Homo sapiens, that would be all of you and me, have passed knowledge from generation to generation, mostly through apprenticeship learning. A young person walking, along, walking alongside an older person, learning the skill of hunting, agriculture, and manipulating bronze and steel. And then something magic happened. We invented scripture, the printing press. And all of a sudden, a wise man or woman was able to extract the information from their brain put it on, on paper or papyrus or rocks and pass it on to many, many, many more people. That was the original digital revolution. It turns out scripture is digital, not analog. And allowed expert knowledge to be distributed to millions more people than before. But writing a book is hard. And reading it is even harder. Why am I talking about this? Because I think of AI as the book that writes itself. We now have systems in artificial intelligence that you can deploy alongside experts. You just watch experts doing their work, picking up the patterns, then helping novices to use those same patterns to become better in their jobs without any effort whatsoever. Let me give you four examples. Start with self-driving cars. At Google, I built Project Waymo, one of the self-driving car leaders, and the core technology was machine learning. We literally started training cars by watching human drivers drive. And now after more than 10 million miles of machines watching people, the computers have become safer than human drivers by picking up the rules that make us drive safely. And I know what you're thinking, not in Delhi. I admit openly, it's harder here than in California. But just wait. Example two. My students spun out a company called Cresta, which helps sales agents to become good sales agents. In sales, your top 80% revenue is produced by your top 20% best people. It takes years to become a good salesperson. 
Questor is AI that sits in the corner, watches your salespeople interact in chat rooms with customers. Every time a conversation leads to a conversion to a sale, it's a positive training example. Every time it doesn't, it's negative. And in building SERP, it builds a repertoire of what to say and what not to say. And when a new salesperson enters the sales floor, it is standing by advising the person what to say next. Just giving a suggestion, here's what you should say. In doing so, new sales agents become twice as effective in converting customers. And on top of this, twice as fast in speaking to customers. Isn't it cool if AI could quadruple your revenues? Now, these are low-paying jobs, you'd say. Um, car drivers and salespeople. How about highly paid jobs? Let's pick a really highly paid job. A human physician. A dermatologist. In America, there's only 10,000 dermatologists. And they're so important and rare that they make $450,000 a year. That is 30 million rupees. It's more than I make. Okay? And what do they do? They become experts. It takes 15 years of training to be an expert of, to find your skin cancer and save your life. Two years ago, my students released a study that was published in Nature on using AI to replicate that skill inside a machine. We watched physicians with 129,000 examples diagnose skin conditions from rashes to acne to lesions all the way to carcinomas and melanomas. And lo and behold, after training from those, learning from these physicians, an iPhone became as competent as the best human doctors in diagnosing skin cancer. We proved this, okay? That means any nurse practitioner anywhere in the world can be as accurate in saving your life as the best Stanford-level dermatologist. Other labs have produced similar studies for radiology, for finding various sorts of cancer. There's no data that shows that computers, AI, can discover Alzheimer in brain images eight years earlier than the best human physicians. I could go on and on and on with many other jobs. You could talk about accountants, about journalists. You could talk about investors, like many of you. In all these areas, there's no examples where AI systems can pick up skills from people and help novices to become experts on day one. Think about yourself. How much time you spend to become experts. How many mistakes you've made. How you refined your skills. Wouldn't you want a piece of AI that could watch you and give the same wisdom to your children so when they enter the workforce, they're as wise as you have become? Now, many have argued this technology is dangerous. It will enslave us. It has to be regulated. Now, for one, the most famous examples of these people arguing aren't even computer scientists. But leaving this aside, this is further from the truth you can imagine. This is a tool. It's a tool like a shovel, like a kitchen knife. And while shovels and kitchen knives can be abused, the potential of AI is enormous. It is not made to replace people. India is a very populous nation. There is no need to replace people in this country. It is made to augment people. It's meant to give us superpowers the same way my cell phone gives me superpowers in letting me talk to people thousands of miles away, or my plane gives me superpowers to make me swim, swim across an ocean in, in minutes. AI gives me the superpower to be expert on day one. Now, let's talk about India. How is India scoring in the battle for AI? 50% of the funding for startups in AI comes from China. 40% United States. 10% everybody else. While I admired and adored the wonderful results that Prime Minister Modi presented this morning, you have work to do. Now, I started a company called Udacity that teaches students AI skills. And amazingly enough, the most active city in the world for us as an American company is Bangalore. We have 1.3 million students in this country, which given that it's only a tenth of a percent of your 1.3 billion population is small, but it's still remarkable. And you have 
companies that are incredibly forward-looking. Infosys, Vipro, Flipkart, and many others have begun upskilling their workforce regularly using online learning techniques to learn about AI. Now, you might walk away and say, well, Sebastian, sounds threatening, sounds exciting, not for us. AI, I've been told, is there to replace labor. We already live in a country with low wages. Let the Americans that pay way too much for their people go first, and we come second. But if you think about AI as turning all of us into experts on day one, then it ought to be right for India. Let me do one last test, show of hands before I stop. Who says foe? Thank you. Thank you, sir. The great hope, of course, is that artificial intelligence combined with human intelligence will take mankind into a whole new age.